translation of the um, uh, the Metta Sutta, right? The Karaniya Metta Sutta. Um, so I think um, um, I read. I, I actually just only this morning or so I retranslated. Um, you know, change some passage and and so and so. This is supposed to be the better one, uh, in case you have the previous one. Okay. Why don't we just do this first? It might be help me to a little bit chanting. Then I can have a little time for me to focus. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, then uh, I will just chant one sentence. You follow one sentence in Pali. Okay, shall we? Uh, that might be good. Okay. All right. Uh, it, it, just follow however you much you can. Okay. So you can see there's a straw like that. I will stop there. Every straw will stop there. Okay. Karaniya matta kusalena. Yang tang san tang pedang api samecha. Sat. Ko uju je su ju je. Suva jo cha semu duana di mani. Santu sako ja subharo je. Pagitjo cha sala huka wuti. Sandin triyo cha nipako cha. Apagapo kule su ananukito. Nachakutang sama chere kinji. Ye ne winyo pare upa wede yung. Sukino wa ke mino hontu. Sape satta bhavan tu sukitatta. Ye ke jiban bhutati. Tasava dhavarava anavasesa. Dika wa ye mahanta wa Majjimara sukha anukha thula Dita wa ye wa atita Ye cha du re va san ti a vi du re Buddha va sam bha ve si va Sape satta bha van tu sukhitatta Naparo Paranikupedha Nyadi Manyetha Katha Chinang Kanji P. 
เปรโรสนาปฏิกัสัญญาณาเยมัญญาสตุขมิเชยมาดายดานิยมพุทธังอายุสายกบุตตมนุรัตเคเอวัมปิสัปบูเดสุมานสัมภาวเยอภริมานังเมตตัญจสัพพโลคัสมิงมานสัมภาวเยอปริมานังอุตตังอโตเจติริยัญเจออาสัมบาดังอเวรังอาสัพพัตตังติดทังติดทังจารันนิสินโนวาสายาโนวายาวัตัสสวิกาเทมิตโตเหตังสัตติงอาทิตย์เยอะบรักมาเอตังวิหารังอินเดมาหูทิตถิงจะอนุปกรรมสีลวาตัสเนนสัมปันโนขาเมสุวินัยเกดังนาหิจาดุกัปปะสัยยังปุณเรทีตีโอเค thank you do you like the sound okay well well firstly the the language has been written in the Pali language for those who doesn't understand what does the language mean uh, what does the language is about so it's well it is especially according to the Pali tradition or Theravada Buddhist tradition um, or perhaps maybe more precise uh, that. Uh, Uh, according to the Buddha Gosa, one of the great commentator in Sri Lanka, uh, so during the fifth century, and he said that actually the Pali is a language that often used in the place that Buddha often lived, called Magadha. So perhaps the best way to understand that is not to say that's the language of the Buddha. I mean that's how some people like to say so. Uh, perhaps the best way, if if you understand it this way. You can understand the language more like the Buddha is a language the Buddha often use, because uh, we all know that uh, for those who really study Buddhism, they know that uh, Buddha lived in the uh, the Magadha actually for 27, uh, spent there for 27 years around. So if that's a language used in that place, then it's, you could presume that's a language mostly the Buddha use. Actually, the language itself is not very far different from Sanskrit. I mean, they are, but I mean, but or you can sometimes understand the Pali kind of like in those day uh, a dialect, you know, or a common uh, a dialect, much simplified language than to the official language, Sanskrit language. Okay. All right. Now uh, we yesterday we say something about uh, uh, the the text about uh, the first uh, verse. You know, we have done it. Uh, the first words. Uh, sorry, even I think yeah, the first words. Well, first words, but I need to uh, mention uh, one more about uh, the number five one. The gentle is a b b k 
capable, upright, honest, easy to instruct, gentle, and not conceit. You know. So in the commentary, and then when you say that a person is a gentle person, what does it mean by gentle? In general, of course, uh, we think that when a person is gentle, it means you know just gentle. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking. Uh, <laughs> just be gentle, and uh, uh, you know, be like uh, maybe have a good demeanor, right? Uh, and uh, like a, a good uh, a posture. Uh, demeanor, am I right? The word called demeanor. Huh? Demeanor. Demeanor, yes, thank you. Demeanor, a good demeanor. So, and, uh, but the commentary say a gentle actually means that a gentle person do not show a grimace face, okay? In a grimace face, in on Chinese, you don't show grimace face. So that's why right, be remember, try not to be have a grimace face for the other person. So it means a gentle person. And then uh, a gentle person also is the one that also always had a welcoming uh, kind of you know expression. So so at uh, in Pali it's called Uttamana Mukha. It's kinda of like a nice face. Okay. You might have a nice face. So, and then also a gentle person is supposed to be easy to talk with also. So, uh, so uh, basically in Nepali it's called Sukha Sampaso, meaning you know, it's uh, always pleasant to talk with. It's called a gentle person. And then, uh, and then a gentle person is always, uh, really always, uh, uh, how to translate that, uh, kind of like, uh, always show the care, the language always show the caring for others, you know, doesn't mean by gentle. So I think it's very important because uh, it's, uh, that is also for somebody to have a guideline, you know, when we have to practice something really uh, serious and then we want to have something uh, peaceful in our mind. So not that we have the faith uh, to ourselves that we can do it. And then uh, we also able must be as I just mentioned before like you know you have to be honest and then also not to be hide something and not to be too proud and not to be proud especially you think you're better than other persons but actually usually in Buddhism understand when you talk about a proud or the so the conceit in Buddhism you usually believe that firstly the person uh, the conceive so the, the first conceive you need to res the solve I don't know how to say, to time to conceive it to that you think that you are inferior to the others, okay? So please remember, any time, I mean, especially if you're really serious about practicing Buddhism, or uh, when I say practice, not only in meditation, just be a human, be a nice person, and uh, try, uh, even though it could come to our mind, but we try to aware that, not to think that you are inferior to other person, okay? So, however, here, the conceit here, not to be conceit, is referred to not to think that you are better than other person, okay? It's not easy. Actually, it's very hard to observe that. Uh, now, so I just mentioned also, and then you need to be gentle. It means uh, maybe not easy, but show, always show your care to other persons, you know, not to have a grimy face and, and uh, always you know, speak nicely, you know. And, uh, and then also show your friendliness face to other persons too. And uh, I mean, I, I'm sure that you can even observe nowadays that people really practice a loving kindness meditation. Or, so those things appear. Am I right? Uh, even me, sometimes I'm not very friendly, I have to say. <laughs> but when I'm practicing, I definitely become very friendly, you know, and become a little bit more patient. <laughs> okay, like that. So um, those are the quality that uh, also I think the commentary uh, make a nice way to say that you know, those are the actually even though the text is so very simple, might be the Buddha try to instruct the monks also they have to be you know behave in such a way to each other. Okay, and then so now we come to the word second. They should be content. Okay, the word sandu sakko mean the content. Now, of course, uh, I don't want to delve too much time on the detail, but at least have some sense of what the Buddhism understanding content. The word to sakko, of course, so it actually could be understand means you're satisfied. You're satisfied. That's what that's mean by the content. So you're satisfied by what? You're satisfied basically by what you have, 
right? And what you possess, basically, and what now you are having, and as well as that you treat everyone, basically you treat everything equally. That's called a set, that be content. So, uh, what I have, what I possess, say, I possess this clothes, I had to be content about it. What I have it now is like what I'm doing now, okay? So maybe I'm talking to a person, maybe I'm just drinking a water, so, and then you should be content about that, right? The right moment, so. And then also, you have to be content about, you treat everything equally. So, that refer to, for example, I'm drinking the water, but then I saw that person drinking a Coca-Cola, or maybe I like Coca-Cola, say, something else maybe. The most expensive juice, I don't know what it is. Or say, the apple juice, maybe that's what I want to drink. So I have to treat this, what I'm drinking, and then the other people drinking the apple juice equal. That's mean by the content, okay? I call Santu Sako, that's a Pali commentary, define the way of content. I think it, it does a good job, am I right? Or did I say a good job? I don't know. Hello. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's mean by the content, okay? And then, uh, <clears throat> Of course, I mean, in terms of uh, certainly in the Buddhist text, sometimes when you say the Santu Sako, it also can refer to, especially those because most of the Buddhist texts uh, refer to the, you know, the monks and nuns and all the monastic members. Of course, it refer to you know, the bowl you have. You know, because in, in old days, actually, it's so funny, that's how a human mind is. And uh, the monks are supposed not to have so much thing, but they have the bowl. But when they have the bow, and when they saw the other people's bow is more better than them, they don't feel very happy. <laughs> My one have a dent. Can you change that to me? <laughs> right, it's not content. And having said that, I have a, one of the uh, kind of, uh, I don't, I, I was about to say a trauma, it's not trauma, kind of really shocking experience in my life about the content is, uh, I once have a, a, a friend who's interesting, and then I somehow I want to borrow the machine from the friend, okay? And uh, it's a tap recorder, in those if we use a tap recorder, okay? I kind of shocking about that story. It's, uh, and then uh, I, I need a tap recorder because I guess, uh, yeah, for my homework, I need to reset the tap again and again, not like nowadays, you know, in computer, we don't have that uh, tap recorder. We just listen to what the teacher taught in the class and have a recorder. And usually what we did in those days, we open a tape recorder again, we type with our typewriter, you know. Actually, I'm very good at typewriter. You don't believe it. And very good. Ba -ba 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 and ding, ding. Uh, we, we miss those days, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and we listen to the class and type. If you don't understand, we need to revise again and listen again and revise again. Revise. That, that, that's how we did in the past, right? And, uh, but anyway, somehow I found this type that the recorder is very useful. And I thought, you know, when I go to Singapore, and I should buy the new one. So I went to the Singapore, and anyway, I passed, I particularly passed Singapore. In those I used to go to Singapore. I passed, I mean, I stopped, drop off, and, I mean, I, I stopped in Singapore, and it, I purchased one of the tap recorder. Uh, when I came back, and I, return the old one. I buy it because I found that tap recorder is very good. I buy the exactly the same one, okay? Uh, now I don't do that anymore. I think that's a stupid idea. I'm joking. But, uh, you know, this is how we think in those days. We don't have much choice, and those are the only varieties we have. So I bought the same ones, and then when I came back, and then I want to return the, the tap recorder. And then uh, that my friend did, were, were, were not happy about when I returned the tap recorder, and he didn't tell me. So, so anyway, something happened, is that he couldn't find the, 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 the wire of the tap recorder. And uh, he didn't even tell me he didn't get the, the connect, what is it called, wire, the wire? The, 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 uh. So he didn't tell me that, and after a week or two, and I was kind of surprised why this person didn't come to see me also, I mean, he used to, <coughs> To my term is bother me, but I'm always very patient. Because actually I don't really like people always visit me. I like to be myself. But you know, but whatever. 
But I, I never say no, but it's, that's okay. But the, however, it's strange because how come the person suddenly disappear for a long time? It's not his usual way of doing it. But then I, I came to understand that afterward, he thought I took his wire because I didn't have my wire. Okay. And that was really made me very, very upset at those days. Because for me, I cannot imagine if I have the, my machine bed, if I couldn't find the wire, I would go to ask, where's my wire, right? So anyway, that's happened. Now, this is a story about the content. So I think so. I don't know. But uh, uh, if somebody content, if he couldn't find a wire, as I say, he might be just go to ask, you know, where's my wire? I guess so, right? But, but when somebody are not understand what they possess, I mean, the, the thing they have, because the reason, actually, the reason why he didn't want to ask me that, he wanted my new recorder. That is, that's why I say it's something to do with the content. It's not content, okay? All right. <clears throat> uh, and then uh, the other, I think, I think I need to pass down. Basically, have to be content and then easy to support, okay? Uh, I'm sure that mean, what, what does it mean by easy to support? You know, whenever you give, you know, they are not really like demanding. They will not, you know, uh, asking the question, what we are going to eat now, and what you are going to cook for me. You know, I mean, especially to refer to the monks and nuns when they invite to the house for the almsgiving. So that's mean by easy to, to support, you know. <clears throat> and then also, that person has to be a few duties, okay. Here, the few duties mean, you know, they don't do too much of like, you know, uh, you know, in old day, uh, the monks and nuns has to uh, take care of the, the almost like a forest. You know, like uh, the gardens or this and that. They have to do a little job of it. it, it that's why I hear to say few duty. It didn't say no duty. Okay, because unfortunate people are so lazy. They always say, "Oh, I'm practice. I don't do this. I don't do that." So here they say few duties. Please understand the word. You still got to work. You can hide yourself in the room all the time, right? So it's uh, like you know, do just do little, not much. You know, some people not like that. They just whole day spending on that. You know, like a garden. You know, then you are not doing your practice. So it means by few duties. And also interesting, the commentary actually uh, say a, a, a big list. I'm not going to put a big list, but generally means that if, however, if you have a duty. Like, you know, in the morning, this is the time you need to go to clean the place, it's a duty. In the Sangha, among the monastic member, you have to fulfill in that duty. And this is not included in this called a few duties. You know? So that means when you wake up, you need to clean your bedroom, you need to clean your bedroom. You need to go to clean the kitchen, that's your duty, and you do it. And then now you can do your meditation, basically, or do your practice. So that means by the few duty is here. So that means what you should do, those things you have to be done. You have to, and your duty is there, and then you have to do that, your own duty. Of course, then there's a list when you are a monk, what kind of thing you have to do, but I'm not going to talk about because you are not monks and nuns. But anyway, so those mean by the few duties uh, generally. So you need to fulfill your, your, your own duty, in other words. But you don't, beside that, don't do too much extra, you know. And uh, the ne next one is called living uh, lightly. Okay, you could say that uh, like a sustainability, you live sustainability. Uh, so it generally means that you are very, uh, uh, just once the life, uh, you have to be learned not to ask in too much, basically live in a very simple way, okay? In a simple way. And the 11 is a little bit uh, difficult actually to explain for general. So the word is Sandindriyo, in the verse two where still, mean with the peaceful faculties. You know, what does it mean by the peaceful faculty? And this is more technical already in Buddhism. It refers to our senses. Usually when we say it's something called the faculties, or in, in the Sanskrit or Pali, we call Indriya, it refers to something really important in you. That's why the word Indriyas mean, because it have a connotation of life. Okay. And then what is really the important in our life? I mean, for a person, you know, in our life, for a person, it means the Indriya. That means six. 
but in a certain tradition is 22. Now we only talk six, okay? Your eyes, your nose, your tongue, your ears, and then your physical body, and then your mind. So that's called six indriyas. In Chinese, called liu gen ma. Oh. So, so in other words, mean here, it has to be uh, called a peaceful, with peaceful faculty. So what does it mean by with the peaceful faculty? With the six senses has to be peaceful. And that's a difficult question, okay? Difficult uh, thing. But it's really important, really, really important when practice. And in the Buddhist text, lots of places explain this. And the Buddha again, 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 and again, 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 again. Anyway, many again to repeat this term, okay? So it refers to, you have to learn to how to uh, guard your senses, okay? So let's say I'm sitting here and then I hear people like, there's a people moving, right? It's okay, huh? I hope you don't mind. There's a people moving, I can hear that, you know? Like what we're doing meditation also, there are people moving there and here. If I don't know how to guard my senses, I will be, why you disturb me? Of course I cannot say, but I just shut my mouth. I should let my mind go there already, right? And then, so let's say, now there's some people moving there also, and there's some people sneezing there, right? And there's people moving here, people doing the paper, right? So, and there's somebody flipping the paper. Can you hear that? You can hear this, right? But uh, the guard here, it means like, if you, are, if you are being carried away, right, then you're not guarding your senses. And if you're not guarding your sensor, senses, or at least you're not guarding your ear sense, so what happened? And then your mind feel disturbed. And then you cannot be calmed down. You cannot be peaceful, you know, understand? So it's called the guard senses. Not easy, but really important. So I mean, some people are like that. Imagine that most of the time, and what, in what kind of situation, when somebody make a noise and you get angry, and when you're not happy, of course, right? When you're happy, say that maybe nowadays people having this uh, telephone, so noisy, they can ignore all this thing, right? So we know that already. So, and people when they're happy, they can, they, they can distract. But however, but then these people still, according to Buddhist concept, unless there's something more there, otherwise in general, I say in general, I don't mean all the time, okay? Unless there's something more there, that means there's a wisdom part, awareness there. Okay, if the awareness is not, not there, if the understanding is not there, when the people were just did, 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 did all the time, actually not, actually it's not got the senses also, you know. Have you ever tried that when you're in front of a computer, when you have a full awareness typing a computer and without awareness typing a computer? It's two different things. Okay, actually this is a, one of the big issues nowadays when you want to talk about the sati, the mindfulness, and the guard senses, you definitely have to address the issue of in facing the computer, how you can guard your senses, <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, so, so for this, typing this, uh, uh, the, the telephone of the, the without guarding senses and he would just need the eyes, you know, basically he needs something changing, changing, changing to make it feel nice. So to Buddhist understanding, if you're really serious in practice meditation now, and then you're yeah, not got in a sense. You know what, I understand what I mean. But you see, there's a different. Maybe there is a, okay, maybe easier to say this. Let me think how to say. Is there some problem? Oh, it's dropped out. Let me say, okay. Uh, hmm. I don't know whether that example makes sense, I mean, to some people. Uh, anyway, since that's only in my mind now. Uh, say, 
uh, when you see a light flashing, okay, and uh, you know the light is flashing, and then, then you also know the light changed to red color and blue color and green color, any type of color, whatever. So, and then you know that it's changing blue color, the green color, and any color, and you know it's flashing. You're still looking at the light, you're somehow it's guarding the sense, okay? Because your mind is still peaceful. I'm saying what I mean. But if you see the red color, oh, blue, and then become white, and then actually you have no, mindful, no mindfulness there. So you don't guard your sense. And then you're being carried away by the flashing of the light, okay? You know what I'm saying? You don't know? It's okay. I said already, so <laughs> my job is done. Right, so that's uh, equal to your eyes, your nose, your tongue. Say, may, maybe the nose is also easier, like you smell something. If you know you smell bad smell, you don't react with it, that means you got the sense, okay? But if you, because of bad smell, you hate it, then you don't got the sense, because you've been carried away, carried away by the bad smell, okay? Right? So that's mean by God's sense. So here, to, to talk about six senses, perhaps the most difficult is the mind, uh, I, at least to me. And the mind here, the God's, the mind, it means more, like, more or less like when you're doing meditation. If you are aware what you're doing, you would not carry away because the way you're thinking, let's say, I think, uh, especially refer to a not good thing, and I think, oh no, that is a bad person, but then because of that, then my mind become obsessed with that kind of thought about the person is bad, and I get angry, I get grief, anyway, I have a lot. So somehow you're not guarding your senses, okay? But please understand, as I say, it's very hard to talk this topic in, in terms of mind, because if you, however, if when this kind of thought going on, and you're aware that this thought is going on, then you're guarding your senses, okay? So in other words, maybe easier to say, the guard senses have to refer, have to have much uh, uh, elements of the mindfulness there as well, the awareness there, okay? Maybe it's, that's maybe easier to say, explain. All right, so somebody, anyway, that somebody have to learn this. If somebody do not learn this, it's very hard to do meditation. So there are people, if you can see, in around, uh, I mean, not this time, I mean, in any way where you go, if you find the people find it very hard to meditate, one of the big reasons is because they don't understand the, the, the concept of guarding sense. Let's say when they meditate, if people making noise, they start to get disturbed. And then uh, they see something they don't like, they start to get disturbed, right? And then to eat something they don't like, they start to get disturbed. That means they're not getting the sense of the tongue, the eyes, and the, and, the, and the ear. Or the same thing, when the weather changes, uh, a little hotter, or a little colder, and then they feel unhappy about it. So then they're not getting the sense. If they got a sense, they know now it is hotter now, it is colder now, they still stay in a very peaceful way. Oh, looks like everybody wants to sleep. Let me just make it how I can not make sense. All right, next jump. And then, uh, usually this topic is very boring. Anyway, and uh, <laughs> let's talk about, what, what does it translation here called a master fool, okay? It means the, the word called <coughs> nipako. It means the master fool. What does it mean by master fool? Uh, well, actually, masterful generally means a, become, a person is quite wise. They know what place is suitable for them, what kind of thing is good for them, and they call the masterful, okay? So, of course, the including uh, generally means, uh, in other words, they have a common knowledge. Maybe put it this way, uh, people have a common knowledge. Like, you know, a common knowledge about the place, about the living, uh, about... Uh, uh, even according to the Buddhist monk about when the, the, the rope is broken, how they seal the rope and all this is a common knowledge about how they should do it, call a master fool. Okay. And then number 13 actually means the modest. And I, I think I like to talk about more, more modest because uh, especially if you learn meditation and uh, when you do practice, you might be on the way, you might be quite good practice, sometimes because you don't know the concept of modest. 
in Buddhism. So it might make some people feel like, yeah, no more is enough. <laughs> uh, you know what, what does modest mean, right? Anyone define for me? What, what does a modest mean? Hmm? Huh? Discreet, okay, gentle, okay. Mm. So, yeah, kind of like humble too, yeah. Uh, and the Buddhism actually, the, the modest, yeah, it's kind of humble, but how do you show the humble is very important. And uh, I, uh, and this is also how, uh, well, since you're here, I think maybe best to give you this advice also. And it's good for you only. There's no any way that it's not good for you. So to be modest is uh, refer to like you know when you go to talk to a person, especially in a Buddhist tradition. Uh, say don't say talk to a person. Say say in physical, uh, humble. There are three way. In Buddhism, always talk in terms of the bodily, in terms of verbal, and in terms of the mind. Okay. The modest is that in terms of bodily. Let's say there's a gathering here. Uh, we are just gather for a meeting, okay? And then you came in just in a, a meeting. Uh, and then so what you do is that there are lots of people are talking there and then you sit there and do the cross leg. You are the best meditator in the world. Then you are not modest, okay? You don't do that. So, and uh, also, you wouldn't say uh, maybe now there's a, another big monk or higher monk who are higher, ordina- uh, higher than you, unless this is a meditation hall, of course everybody know you are doing meditation. I'm saying that. That's why he said very clearly, when you go to a gathering, this is not a meditation now, right? And then you just go and nobody do that. Of course, if everybody sit in a cross light and doing meditation, then you do that. Nobody, that's still with modest, right? But if nobody do that and you just sit and cross light, and that's not modest. Be, be aware, and Buddhism is very, you know. And then, uh, so that's listed in the commentary, so that I be, be modest. So that's why on the contrary, you might be doing a cross and meditation, very good posture, the best meditative posture in the world, like better than a Buddha statue, maybe, okay? And then, uh, you're doing meditation, nobody come in. But then now, then the people come in now, you know, let's say, they're coming, they are just, uh, you know, this is for a meeting, people have to gather together to talk something, and then you should actually put down this thing. So, it's called modest. And actually, even to uh, tradition, I mean, in, at least the way I learn, so, and this is how we know this is a good person or not a good person. When he, when he came in, he put down this and pretend like nothing happened, pretend like he didn't do meditation, pretend like he just like, oh, hey, how are you, and this and that. And then, no, yes, yeah, this is the time we should talk now, and this and that. Then we know it's a modest person. And then you know this kind of person, they definitely can practice very well. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Get it now? It's very important. Okay. On the contrary, I know that I did meet a lot of people in the past. They thought that's, uh, you know, I'm a good practitioner, so that's what I should do. But look at this the so called, if you happen to meet a good teacher, or you see, did they ever do that in front of people? No. You, you can see, they don't. They, so that's uh, called a modest. And also the including, uh, it's nice there to mention that also including, you know, because in the Buddhist tradition, when you eat, and, and then when somebody who is elder than you in their precepts, it means they're elder, they become a monk earlier than you, you have to give your seat for them, right? That is also called modest. And that's mentioned in commentary also. So if you are younger, in the age of become a monk, you need to give the seat for them, and then you sit behind. And then also, even the younger one also, the, those who become a monk younger than you, you have to let them to find a seat also. Let's say this is my seat, right? And then so I had to go, oh, and since they're older than me, I will keep my seat. So you sit here, then I'm quite to sit other one. But maybe if another younger monk come, I also have to let him find a seat. So, so that's called a modest, okay. So, <clears throat> that's for the bodily. I will just say some one or two. Uh, oh yeah, other one example important is that never, never, even in meditation or so, in the future, this is good for you also, I guess. <laughs> I think it's a good polite way. I don't know whether they agree, but I just had to tell you too. When you want to ask the teacher a question, try. 
the best not to go in front, okay? So sometimes you say, you want to ask the teacher a question, you go in front, teacher, I have a question. Actually, this is almost like I'll have a challenge, you know. You're challenging someone, right? Never. Uh, don't. Unless, for some reason, the teacher say, go here, because maybe, I don't know what reason. Normally, I don't think you would do that. So never ask a question, try to rightly go in front of the, the teacher, always in the side, okay? Even though, just a little side, but never right in front, you know what I'm saying? Okay, never. Remember this. So, uh, um, because uh, I think even psychology, actually, do, they do have explanation about that. Because if you go right in the front, actually, people get tension there already. So, right? No? Look at if I ask somebody uh, I'm on, the, on the way, on, 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 while I was on, I lost my way and I was on the street, I want to ask how to go get there. I go in front of people, hey, tell me where I'm going. It's almost like, no, no, you're just in the side. Say, can you, can you help me? Maybe about 45 degree, you know, of that uh, person, something like that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the other something, other thing is the same thing, like, you know, uh, it's, uh, you don't also go in the front when the, when the teacher is sitting and you go in the front and stand in, also asking questions. First, ask the permission. And firstly, not in the front. Second, ask the permission, can I sit down? And then you talk. All right. All right. Unless you want to make it quick, you can say, forgive me, I, I mean quick, can I ask you a question right this way, like that, you know. That's it's a kind, in the Buddhist ethic, usually we have to learn a lot about this. It's called a modest. Okay. There's a bodily, and then for the speech, <clears throat> this is very, very common. I really want to say this. I hope that one day I can talk to the Sangha, <laughs> monastic members sometime. Very important. The speech is that if you want to say something without the permission, you know, you have to ask for the permission first, you know, especially when the elders are talking. Let's say you really want to say something, ask the permission, can I say something? You know, so. And the second is that uh, <clears throat> certainly, you know, especially when the, the elders are there, when people are asking questions, never going to answer the question before, you know, asking a permission. Or basically, unless the elders don't want to answer the question. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, when elders mean, you know, the same thing like a house, the same. When people are asking a question like, ask a parents, right? When there's a family, maybe a guest come in and they say, oh, and how much you buy this house, for example, right? Then you, how do you train your children? You don't ask them to answer the question. I know. And the, always the, the parents ask. Unless the parents say, ah, can you tell? Can you answer? So then they answer. That's also for the, it's a modest for the speech, you know. Hmm. All right. And also a lot of things. I mean, that's a, one, some other thing is very in, in, interesting. Is like, you know, in those days in India, Sometimes when you have a shower, you, have a, you must have to uh, have a hot shower, so you need to, you know, do the fire because due to uh, whatever reasons. And then uh, you don't... <laughs> Modest here, I mean, you always, uh, you know, do not... You have to ask permission first, if, especially when you... You know, in, in Indian tradition, even in Sri Lanka, they, they still have that. Sometimes we take the shower like, you know, in, in the same place, like, you know, especially when, oh, now we have to go out now, and then the shower in the same place. And then, uh, then there's only one hot bath, right? And then you always allow the, hot, the elders to take the hot bath first, like, like, I mean, the hot water, because the space is not enough. So you, you just take the cold shower, and they have a hot shower there. You don't go there and just, you know, and you don't care. So, that, and also, Sometimes, you know, in Sri Lanka, the same way, like uh, when the water drops down, you know that because of the, when you wash, you, you have the shop in the body, water drop, and then you, the, the, how to say, the water will drop on the floor, that water will, will how to say, bounce, you know, like uh, the, the splash to the other person, and uh, then you have to know, you don't do it. So what you have to do, you need to knee down, in order let, not to let the water to splash the other person. Those are called the motors. I mean, this is just a, like a general. The last thing is actually is about the mind. What does it mean by the mind? I'm sure nowadays people understand that. So this is very important even for a practitioner. The mind is like, for example, you know what is the thing I, as far as I learned while I was in England, 
uh, one, at least those friends told me, uh, uh, especially the women, uh, they hate sometimes when they talk to the man. What they hate is that after they talk to a man, they have a good conversation, and then somehow the women detect that the man had, a, had some uh, you know, sexuality kind of idea with them, right? No answer. Everybody is so quiet. No? You're happy about that? I don't know. I'm not a woman, so I don't know. Okay, all right. Maybe, unless the man is very handsome. All right. That's another story. <laughs> That's another story. I cannot talk about that story. But I mean, generally, right? So the same way, actually, to be modest, uh, and, and at least in the commentary say, is that someone has, must have the mind not to think about those things when you're, you know, uh, having a conversation with other persons. Okay. All right. I don't know. Somebody find that it's not interesting. Somebody find it interesting. But I will try to amuse myself now. <laughs> okay. Now, the, no, the next one is that, uh, and, and also no greed for the supporters. I think I don't have to explain much. I mean, generally means that, uh, you know, you don't have the, uh, uh, the greed. Hope that the supporters will give you more, give you this and more, and then, and so. The number third one. So, <clears throat> Now, this is actually difficult, so, and it's uh, important. I think all is important. Nacha kutang sama kinji. Okay, so ye no vinyo pare upavade yong. It means do not do the slightest thing that the wise would later censor. So, the, the statements are very simple. Okay. Uh, actually, here, um, It's, it's not just simply say, you don't do any, even a small wrong thing, and then the wise people, uh, anyway, don't do a small uh, a wrong thing. Here, even also refer that someone actually, if they are the people who do not commit even a small uh, wrong thing, refer to somebody they actually understand what does a wise person mean? Okay. So by only this kind of people will learn not to commit a small thing. Okay. So that's actually he trying to, according to commentary, trying to explain in, 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 in this way. Now, so, um, and in other words, it's also, in other side, it show that the person become a wise person. And the person actually know what is the thing that they shouldn't do, and they would not be follow the the uh, doing the thing like the foolish people do. For example, like what? Actually, it's a small case they make it big case. It's, it's said in commentary, and this is definitely not a wise person, right? A small thing, you know. I'm sure this is always happen in the family in any way. <laughs> a small thing. Might be need to solve that's fine, but they create it as a big thing, right? And that's the uh, I mentioned that one. And then uh, actually, it is nothing wrong, and they take it take that as a big is a big wrong, okay? So and uh, I really completely agree. I have to tell you, this is the difficult part when you have uh, look after a place, not anywhere. Whenever you live in community. That's why the people, whether wise or not, they think they see a small thing as a big thing, big deal, right? And because they're not wise enough. And then also sometimes it's uh, nothing wrong, but they see it as a big wrong, you know? So, and those are the actually always uh, comes with this case. Okay. It's not easy. Okay, now we're back to the almost like our subject now. Subjects mean the really focus of practice now. So, what he have to do after that? And he was wishing, that means actually it's a mind, it, it, it's just, just a translation to say. Um, did I still try? At ease? Yeah, happy at ease, may all beings be happy at heart. Okay. In other words, mean, uh, from here now we start to say if the people can have those qualities, 
and then they started to wish all people here they said very clearly all beings you know all sentient beings be happy and then may they be happy and may they be calm or at, at ease or may they be calm and may they be happy the three things mean may they be happy may they be at ease and may they be themselves find happiness that means actually I don't know whether at heart it doesn't mean translate with that but it means literally mean uh, sukitata mean themselves can be happy okay all right okay whatever beings they may be it means in what it's no matter what kind of beings they are either they are the what well, the translation I use later trembling or either they are the strong or even including the long, large, middle, short, subtle, blended. Okay, what does it mean? So it means uh, now this is actually is a different. Uh, uh, I would say the different. What is the word? Different system. Uh, maybe you can say that. A different system of practicing the loving kindness meditation. Okay. So in other words, when you practice uh, this uh, according to the Buddha, so when you have those good behavior and you become a wise person and then uh, you know what is important to do and then now you, you have to wish everyone to be well to be happy uh, to be can be calm uh, that means can be at ease in English and then to all can be happy by themselves right you just the mind you always develop this and to even to what people call the trembling actually that's literal word tasawa tasa it means the trembling you know so refer to the worldly people mean the people who are not a saint people who are not a noble person people who is not arahan not sotapanna sakatakami refer to these people because anything that comes to them they get fear they are not stable that's got tempering so you have to wish these people to be well and happy and be just we mentioned be happy be calm and then be happy themselves and also wish to wish the, what kind of people the strong just now we mentioned the strong refer to the noble people especially like a buddha arahant you know and in sotapanna sakatakami they are you know the called strong and then also you had to wish uh, other other even including or actually the origin was not exception you know no, uh, no exception from what, from the long, large, middling, short, subtle, blended. Now the long refer to anything long, like what? Snake and well, wow, very good. That's exactly what the commentary say. Maybe you did write a commentary in the past, okay? <laughs> good, and something like that. Okay, the large one, like elephant, right? And then uh, the middling is in between. It's always in between, okay. And then the, anything large, anything long, anything middling, in between. Say the human may be in between, okay. And then the short, sometimes it's referred to like a little patty, a little dog, you know, like little pet, you know, they call a short one. And subtler one is referred to a very tiny uh, thing. Uh, for example, like uh, I forgot, or like like the tick, even though we don't like it. The tick, mosquito, you know, house flies, you know. Actually, subtle is even smaller than that, house fly. Just short, you can include it in there. But it's no matter. You just know the category. There's a long, there's a middling, there's a short, and then there's a, uh, yeah, the, the, the subtle, and then the blended, okay. The blended refer to, uh, uh, I don't know whether the translation is a good one, but the commentary say they refer to like anything like a shell routing the seashell you know sea sh shell <laughs> the, the seashell you know the route thing and what else uh, or crab you know i don't know why they include that as a like a crab you know you know crazy crab uh, yeah and all, all these kind of route thing uh this uh, to call the blender okay uh, but actually, original meaning means kind of rough one. But they regard that, I don't know, it's just a maybe different perception. It's like they think that's like a rough one, you know. Uh, so, rough. 
uh, the snail, you know, uh, kind of with the with the with the kind of something uh, the, the, with the shell, right? Okay. Uh, and then uh, seen or even unseen. The seen means you can see. Unseen refer to invisible thing as well as it refer to uh, you cannot see now. Let's say beyond the mountain, like what we do meditation. Say this is here, may you be all well, be happy, right? But then, uh, then you think about it. New York City is unseen, okay? Because you cannot see. Okay. Near is mean anything near to you. Far mean anything far away from you. So near, I'm sure you also know. So you are near, and then uh, the neighborhood is far. But however, even there, so in the future you will know why we had to do that. It's, I don't want to explain too much now. At least we just try to stick to here. It means, say, actually when I meditate on the uh, neighborhood, again I meditate on the New York City, and the neighborhood is near, and the New York City is far, okay? But if I meditate on, say, uh, India, and then the New York City is near, and India is far, okay? Right. <clears throat> and then to the second for the birth, you have to meditate, and then second for the birth, actually, born, for those who were born, just born, newly born baby, and newly born any type of living thing, and second to the birth, refer to if it in the mother, uh, not mother, uh, marmal, ma 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 uh, how to pronounce the word, marmal, ma marmal, ma ma you know, uh, they have a kind of in the womb, you know, sort of kind, and then uh, they are still in the womb, it's called second to the birth, and uh, like uh, if it for this kind, another type is called, they always born through the shell, is it shell? No shell. Uh, like egg, you know, the egg, and then that's another type of the, the, the thing, and then they're still inside, you know, waiting to be grow and be born. That's called skin for the bone. And the other two, it's very hard to explain. I, I, I just give it now. So, uh, <clears throat> and then, then you have to say, may all beings be happy at heart. <clears throat> oh, I have heart so quick. I'm happy to know that. Let me finish this part. I will just. Uh, I'm not going to finish the paper now, but I will just say. <clears throat> so, in other words, actually, this is uh, just. I mean, uh, besides that, we learn something from the loving kindness meditation here, uh, loving kindness sutta here, but we also uh, give you a, a, some of the scheme. It could be do the loving kindness meditation, a different scheme. In other words, I mean. You can have the scheme. I mean, when you meditate, you have to meditate and to contemplate or to you know do loving kindness to the people who is the trembly one and then the noble one. That means the strong one, right? And then also the what we call the sea and seen one, right? This is how it's a sea one, and those beyond is unseen, one, right? Beyond my eyesight is unseen one. And then uh, also meditate on this is a close one and the further one, and as well as that, which is the, the is already born and about to be born, right? So, and then that, in other words, mean you have four pairs and then eight categories. And then four pairs, no, four pairs and eight, yeah, eight categories. So, Right. This is how the loving kind. This is a sutta. At least this is how the Buddha instructed at the time. Uh, in particular, in that reasons we mentioned before. So, so when I say close and far, I mean like if I meditate, may you be well and happy. But I, I use, I believe that this is certainly for people who have done what we are going to do tomorrow. Also, also, because tomorrow we are going to do the immeasurable might that all direction. So let's say if I have done all direction, so this is, and then you can use this as another system practice, like this line is a close one, may you be well and happy, 
and then the further one, may you be well and happy, and then another further one, may you be well and happy, and then the second line is a closer one, okay? And the third one is the further one. So now, so it is actually is a way also to extend your loving kindness from a closer to the longer to the closer from the closer again comparatively to the longer. Now you may be people asking, why it is why 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 how why why what is necessary? He has lots of meaning there. Okay, one of the meaning, if I can allow to explain. It's because in always in insight meditation, always, always in insight meditation, you must be able to discern which is closer, which is further. It become a Buddhist tradition, okay? So, and uh, which is further, which is fur uh, which is further, and actually, in other words, mean you start to also learn by doing so when you practice this again and again and again. This is called practicing you will start to realize that actually the closer or the further and then closer to the further later on it is all a concept okay all right it's just a relative sign now important here we all know this is a relative sign in our study <laughs> but i'm not here to talk study i say experienced you certainly down to earth know this is relative sense so this is how you remove your attach. Like people say, how can I see the far away? I can see now, but I cannot see far away. Yeah, true. Can I say no, not true? True. But also you can say, for some people, let's say, uh, whatever reason, like the people have, have the short sight, Really serious short side, is it called short side? Maybe short side, yeah. Near side. They, near side, yeah, maybe near side. They cannot see the close by. Far side, okay, thank you. I, uh, I get confused. You see, I don't have concept about far and short. I'm joking. <laughs> like a far side, like if it's really serious in case. And when the people here, I cannot see, but I see the far, and I say, there's no people here, but there's a people over there, right? Okay. Uh, it is, uh, I mean, this is, uh, anyway, so you, it's, it's a way also that you start to learn to break through the concept, okay? All right, uh, let me finish the last thing. It's uh, just we mentioned also, and then we also mentioned the middle also. So the long one, the short one, the middle one is uh, in terms of the size also. You can uh, put it in the three, three groups. No, the three groups in, in three sections. And then the big one, the small one, like a tiny one. And then the middle, middle one. And then and as well as the, the rough one, the so-called the the short one, the short one and the rough one and the middle one and the tree. So all together you have pair for four groups and then you have the triple triplet for three groups. And this is how you then you almost like fulfilling uh, uh, the meditation of this. But the last few sentences actually is very important. Uh, I may be save it for tomorrow, but I can say a few words here. It looks like, you know, when people ask me a question. So, do Buddhism talk about, you know, uh, how Buddhism really understand uh, 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 the called equa uh, equality? It's called equality. Egalism, right? You know, egalism? Yeah. Egalitarianism, yeah. So, and uh, so actually, the next time, you, when you read this tag, you'll find it later. And it did say that, you know, so you have to be actually meditate up to that. You wish these people would not harm the other, and they would not retaliate, you know, to other, so that these people will wish them to be suffer, right? Uh, and uh, without regarding, actually, here they even didn't say that, but the, the, it's very clear. Anybody in anywhere in the whole universe, or even in the world here. So you have to be able to meditate up to, you don't wish anyone want to hurt the other. Okay, so, and this is, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess if this concept came to 
America very early and they know, understand that. Yeah, actually, I'm going to try to do that at least even. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I never learned the Constitution in America. But I just want to say, I, then I, I definitely believe if that concept really come to Buddhism and been uh, understand well for them, I don't think the slavery did happen in America because that's a, it's a very strong case to support Buddhism completely disagree with the slavery at all, you know, even from a very early time. Okay, uh, like uh, the race problem and the slavery certainly uh, cannot be happened if you really had applied the Buddhist philosophy, you know, into the constitution. Okay, so all right. Uh, I know some people ask me question. I think it's too late now, and I'm very tired. And uh, we should do the transfer marriage, and then I maybe the next tomorrow I try to answer some question. And I know that those question is not in a hurry too. And thank you for your attention. And I forget the time, even though I'm so tired. I forget the time. No. Now take only five minutes break, <laughs> and then come back. And form a group of three person again, but don't stay in the same group, okay? Mm. Don't worry, just a little walk over here and there. All right. Take five minutes break, come back, form a three, three person in a group, but don't stay in the same group. <laughs> <laughs>